nakakatamad mag-devotion. Wala akong gaano mag-pray. Wala ako sa mood mag-worship. Naranasan mo na ba yung mga sitwasyon na sinabi ko? I'm sure you can relate. <laughs> Hindi lang ikaw nag-iisa dyan. It is common to all of us. Don't worry because what you're feeling is normal. We are all in the flesh. And every day, we struggle. This is why we need to train for godliness. Siguro may isip mo, bakit kailangan ko mag-train for godliness? Does it not come naturally once you become a Christian? Actually, no. Godliness cannot be achieved overnight. It requires discipline and training for us to really achieve our goal. Just like how athletes do. Athletes do not wake up the next day na malakas na yung katawan nila at strong na yung stamina nila. But athletes have to go through rigorous training para ma-achieve nila yung best shape nila to be ready for the competition that they want to win. And when we come to think of it, the training that athletes engage in can actually also be applied to our spiritual life in the same sense. It says here in 1 Timothy 4, 7-8, Do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Maraming iba't ibang klase ng training. And the goal remains the same. It is to be at our best. And the same principle applies to godliness. Just like any other training, godliness requires number one, discipline. Big word. <laughs> I myself struggle in that area. Just check how many alarms I have in my phone. <laughs> that is a clear reflection of my lack of discipline for time. Because discipline requires sticking to the schedule. It requires us to do what is painful at the moment in order to achieve results that are long-lasting. For example, in our spiritual walk, God wants us to have quality time with Him. Quality time, guys! <laughs> that means we don't just squeeze Him in our schedules. We set aside a time for Him. To meet with Him, to listen to Him, to pray, and to worship Him. Now, you may think, ay, sobrang busy ko, ang dami kong ginagawa, paano ko pa magagawa yun? But we all have 24 hours a day. I'm sure wala dito may 25 hours. <laughs> and so, we just have to manage our time because some people can do it. That means you can do it too. Discipline does not only mean sticking to the schedule, but it also would require you to give up some of the things that are taking most of your time and replacing them with habits that would give you long-lasting results. Lately, I have that realization that in the morning as I meet with the Lord, it has become so much of a routine. And hindi ko na nararamdaman yung training, kumbaga. Dahil masyado nang hardwired yung katawan ko to, to do that every single day. And then I realized I need to step up the training. And so what I did was I have to adjust my alarm Binawasan ko yung lima kong alarm. <laughs> now, I didn't do it drastically. I had to remove one alarm day after day until such time that I disciplined myself to wake up with just one alarm. Because I don't want to rush my time with him. And I need to spend more time with him the more I am given a lot of responsibilities in the ministry and in this vlog and wherever God is using me. I need more time with him in order for me to minister to people and so i really have to step up the training just like how athletes do that when they can finish a kilometer run they would step up their training in order for them to finish more kilometers if you feel like your devotional life is a routine already i encourage you to also step up the training step up your discipline game Hebrews 12, 11 to 13 says, For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Point number two, it requires 
focus and consistency in order to see results. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 25 to 27 says, Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Imagine a runner who is running the race and keeps on looking to the right or to the left because of so many distractions. There is no way that runner can finish his goal on time. And so it is with us. Training for godliness would require us to turn off distractions and really focus on what is needed for that time. So when we are doing devotions in the morning, we try as much as possible not to get distracted by picking up our phone first pagising mo sa umaga. We have that excuse of killing the alarm, but then we find ourselves at the end scrolling through our notifications. And so, as a practical tip, I've also set some downtime for my screen time on my phone, and that would turn off all the apps. So that's my signal not to browse on my social media apps early in the morning and set that time for the Lord. Of course, I have my lapses, but I try to make it as much as possible to follow this so that I would have an undivided time with the Lord. Imagine if you are on a date and your date keeps on checking his phone and keeps on looking away and not focused on you. What kind of date is that? But a lot of times, that's how we are with God. We set aside a time but we keep on doing other things in between. When I was preparing this word that I'm sharing to you, I knew it was for me. I knew it was God speaking to me directly and really correcting my ways because I, I really struggle in the area of self-discipline. I'm not sure if all creatives are like this, but I have this tendency to be Ningas Kugon or to be excited to start something, but in the long run, run out of fire and passion to do it. But it shouldn't be the case when it comes to our walk with God. We really need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We really need to be consistent every day to meet with God, even when we don't feel like doing it. Yes, there are times when you don't feel like meeting God in the morning or meeting Him at night. There will be times when the worries of this world will be so heavy or your physical body is too weak to just even utter a prayer. But you have to decide and resolve in your heart to do it. That is training for godliness. So remove all distractions, turn away all the noise, and keep your walk with God intentional and consistent. Point number three, it requires you to finish what you started. In 1 Timothy 4.16, it says, Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Training for godliness is not just for our benefit. It is also for the people that you will serve today or maybe in the future. Friends, the more we consistently walk with God, the more people are looking at our lives. Our walk with God is not something that we can fake. It is not something that we can just put on like a show. People will know if we are really walking in obedience to God. We don't want others to be stumbled and lose their way out of the track that they are running just because they see us straying away from the track also. That is the least that we want to happen. And so we strive to win the race for the Lord's glory and also to usher people to run the race and win the race. The verse that we just read says that if we persist in this, we will save both ourselves and our hearers. After the pain, after the grueling sacrifices, after giving up our pleasures, it will have benefits in this life and in the life to come. Romans 6, 16 to 18. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, 
or to obedience which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and become slaves to righteousness. What we feed becomes stronger. When we worship and devote our time with God, that promises benefits in this life. That we will not be any more slaves to sin, but we will be slaves to righteousness. That we will choose good over the temptation to sin. And that is achieved if we continue to feed our spirit with the Word of God. Lastly, it promises benefits in the life to come. 1 Corinthians 9, 24-27 says, Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. We need to run to win. We are not purposeless. We are not just aiming anywhere. We have one goal, and that is to be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is our ultimate reward. And so anything that will hinder us from being closer to Christ must go. Anything that will slow us down must be left behind. Because we are running with a purpose. We are running to reach that prize. It says here in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. What is your one thing? What is that one thing that keeps you going? Isn't it worth all the pain? all the struggle, all the discipline that you need to make for yourself in order to reach that prize. If athletes are beating themselves up with every rigorous training just so they can win a prize that is earthly and it will fade away eventually, how much more us who are looking forward to that grand and glorious day where we will be with Jesus forever. Gusto ko ding i-share sa inyo yung sinulat ko sa aking devotion notebook on the things that I want to be changed in my spiritual walk because I don't want to stay stagnant in my spiritual life. God is calling us to go from glory to glory, from strength to strength, and from faith to faith. And in this season of my life, I felt like my level of faith and my level of spirituality has become a plateau and i don't want it to stay like that i want it to be a higher level and so i need to step up my training i need to change something in my habits and in my routine for me to achieve greater strength and greater endurance i said earlier that i ko yung aking alarm <laughs> number two i have written here that I need to devote more time to pray. Number three, I've written here I need to memorize scripture. I've started memorizing scripture uh, a few months ago. I was actually memorizing Philippians. Nasabi ko yun sa podcast nung nakaraan. And it's been a struggle lately dahil sobrang daming ginagawa. But I am trying to get back on track. I have put here, study the word of God in depth. I know that requires more than just my daily readings and meditating on the word. I need to devote time to really dig in deeper in the word. I need to monitor my social media time and screen time. That's why I've set down times on my phone. I've also written here, I need to monitor my speech because a lot of times I fail in that area because my mouth just blurts out 
words. <laughs> and some of them are unfiltered, so I need to work on that. It requires discipline also. I have put here, reach out to people intentionally. Read books. You know what I wrote here? Your Kindle does not belong in the bag. <laughs> and lastly, I've written, be conscious of my thoughts and thought patterns. So when my mind wanders away and it is not something that is pleasing to God, I need to be conscious and be reminded that I need to discipline my mind as well. That is my discipline list and I am hoping and praying that I will be able to do it until I set new goals for myself. I know it will be tougher in the years to come but one thing is for sure we have a great coach with us who's cheering us on and that is Jesus he is not giving up on us on this journey we're not doing this discipline alone he is with us and he will carry us through I pray that we will continue to run this race with endurance and grab a hold of our reward who is Jesus Christ bye